welcome back to TFT Central. Today we're going to look at the topic of OLED monitor black depth and in particular how the perceived black depth in real use and in real ambient lighting situations can be impacted by panel technology and by the panel coating. Is QD OLED worse than W OLED for black depth? Does a glossy coating really improve blacks compared with a matte anti-glare coating? Are there some situations where an OLED can end up looking like an LCD? And does panel coating actually ruin OLED's innate benefits when it comes to black depth and contrast? These are all questions we want to explore and we've run extensive testing to produce objective data that can quantify and support our subjective assessment. This video is a shorter format walkthrough of our testing and key results, but if you want more detail and information, please do check out our full written article linked on the screen now and in the description below. As a quick bit of background, the way to measure and compare a display's luminance, black depth and contrast ratio has always been the same. A device or a meter such as a colorimeter is hung from the screen with contact between its measurement area and the panel surface. This meter then takes a measurement of a white test sample pattern and a black test sample and then uses the two to calculate the contrast ratio. This has always been used as a sensible way to create a uniform and consistent measurement approach and it helps eliminate external variables and provides a good way to compare different screens and panel technologies. This is especially important in the LCD market but it is a little bit more complicated in the OLED market when black is actually truly black and so the contrast ratio basically becomes infinite. This meter to panel measurement approach only tells us one part of the story though as it's really just capturing the maximum contrast ratio that the panel is capable of. In real use, you are sat much further away from the panel surface and the way you perceive the image on the screen and the black depth is therefore impacted and influenced by a number of different variables. This will include one, your ambient lighting and room brightness, two, the location and positioning of any light sources and lamps, windows and other lights, Three, the coating on the screen surface, which has a direct impact on how internal light from the panel and its backlight and external light from other sources is handled. And then four, finally, your viewing position. The meter to panel measurement is really akin to if you use the screen in a completely dark room with zero additional light sources. If you view an OLED screen showing a black image in a completely dark room, and then the room will just end up being pitch black as the panel is being turned off completely. Nothing else is then influencing what you see, but of course this is going to be a very rare use case. If you use the screen in a very bright office for instance, then the black depth will be impacted by the external light and black suddenly start to look less black. You lose the contrast you experience in a dark room as a result. And then there's often talk online about this somehow turns an OLED panel into an IPS panel when it comes to contrast, which we'll investigate in this video a little bit later. But the point is that the perceived black depth and contrast will be less than if you were using it in a fully dark room or going to the maximum spec alone. It can certainly no longer be classified as infinite or as good as some of the specs you see advertised today anyway. In order to capture data for this video, we created a controlled test environment in our lab which allowed us to control the room brightness at different levels, along with testing a range of different displays with different panel coatings and different technologies. This testing methodology is explained in more detail in the written article linked above here. The external light source in the room was positioned in front of the display, but off to the side so as not to cause any direct reflections on the panel and represented a fairly typical setup for a room. We also did consider alternative lighting positions like directly facing the screen or even backlighting where it's only behind the monitor, which we'll discuss a little bit later as well. The actual displays we use for these tests are listed in the article for completeness, but because the underlying panel technology and the underlying screen coating remain pretty much consistent across most screens, the results here can be considered across the technology as a whole. For instance, the results from the matte anti-glare WOLED panel should be applicable for all matte anti-glare WOLED panels currently available, since they all have the exact same coating. Likewise, for the LCD screens, we've selected models with typical performance, and again, the coating is generally consistent across the market. For this testing, we included a matte anti-glare WOLED panel, glossy WOLED, a custom glass coated WOLED, first gen QD OLED with its semi-glossy coating, 
second generation QD OLED with its semi-glossy coating. And then for LCD technologies, we tested TN film with matte, VA with matte, IPS with matte, and also IPS with a glossy and a custom glass coating as well. On to the results and analysis then. The graphs show the measured black depth along the vertical y-axis here, starting at true black in the bottom left-hand corner. The ambient lighting level of the room is then shown along the horizontal y-axis, getting brighter as you move from left to right. Let's start with the OLED panels then. So each coloured line represents a different OLED panel technology and coating combination. We'll drill into some of the results in a bit more detail first. The three current OLED monitor sized options which are used for all currently available monitor sized OLED screens are semi-glossy QD OLED from Samsung Display's first generation of panels, their QD OLED from their second generation of panels, and then matte anti-glare coated WOLED panels. This is the most interesting comparison then for the current OLED monitor market. Our measurements show that there have been some improvements made by Samsung Display with their change from Gen 1 to Gen 2 QD OLED something that they did promote when they launched the more recent panels. That is along with improved pixel shape, improved text clarity and some expected lifespan benefits too. There's around a 36% improvement in perceived black depth between Gen 1 and Gen 2 QDOLA panels in our testing. The more striking difference is how much better the WOLED panels are though to QDOLED in these tests. In fact, matte WOLA panels are approximately twice as good as second gen QD OLED panels and retain their black depth much better. Compared to first gen QD OLED panels, then WOLA panels are around 2.7 times better when it comes to perceived black depth. Both panels look the same in a dark room, but the difference in practice becomes increasingly noticeable as the room becomes brighter. As ambient light increases, the QD OLED panel is impacted a lot more and blacks really do start to look more gray visually. This difference is caused by the fact that QD OLED panels lack a polarizer and the ambient light inadvertently activates the quantum dot layer on the panel and scatters the light back at the user. The two panels will look the same and very similar in very dark room conditions, but as soon as you introduce ambient light, black depth is impacted a lot more on QD OLED than it is on W OLED panels. This is something Samsung Display will need to try and address though if they can with future QD OLED generations. The issue does still apply unfortunately to even the latest second gen panels right now. We should say here that it's not all negative for QD OLED panels though, as their semi-glossy screen coating provides a sharper, clearer and crisper image than current matte AG W OLED panels, which are actually quite grainy currently. They also have better text rendering capability, especially with the second gen QD OLED panels, showing less fringing and clearer text. They do also tend to have a wider colour gamut, leading to more vivid and saturated colours and benefits when it comes to brightness and HDR content, for instance. This study is, of course, specifically looking at black depth, but we did want to provide some balance to this conversation as well. There are currently no glossy WOLED panels available in the monitor market, at least not in traditional monitor sizes. There are a couple of 42-inch size screens like the LG 42C2, LG 42C3, and KTC's G42 P5 display. And they have glossy WOLED panels like you might find in the TV market. And they could be considered crossover displays and suitable for desktop use for some people. So we did want to include those in this test. It's interesting to see whether the matte AG coating that's been applied to all WOLED monitor size panels has an impact on contrast and black depth as well. The matte AG coating does have a negative impact on perceived black depth, with glossy panels being around 3.5 times better in fact. This is caused by the diffusion of light from the anti-glare coating on those matte panels. It does a very good job of eliminating reflections, which can be a real problem on glossy panels, but it does negatively impact black as the ambient lighting increases. We can't just universally say though that glossy is better than matte, as there's a balance here between maintaining black depth and avoiding distracting reflections. The testing here was carried out with the ambient lighting away from the screen to the side, so as not to reflect on the screen directly. That's a reasonably practical setup if you were to use a glossy panel day to day. If your light source is in another position though, like if you have it behind you or a window behind you for instance, then the reflectivity of the glossy coating will be a significant problem. Matte AG coatings handle those situations much better, and we still feel that despite the impact of perceived black depth, 
a matte AG coating is likely to be better for many people using these screens in a normal office environment during the day and in well-lit rooms. Glossy is optimal and fine, of course, for TVs in a dark room, for nighttime viewing, etc., where you can control the lights well. But for desktop usage during the daytime and in more well-lit rooms, the reflections caused by the coating can be distracting. Everyone will have their preference, but there is a good reason why matte AG coatings have been used almost exclusively for 20 or so years in the LCD monitor market, and we think they're likely to be the better choice for many. These photos provide a good comparison of the visual difference between a matte AG W OLED panel and a glossy W OLED panel in a dark room and bright room conditions. While you're looking at those, now would be a great time to quickly hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on all our future videos and content. We've kindly been sent an early development sample of Doe's forthcoming glossy 27 inch WOLED panel. Now we know how some viewers will feel about Doe, formerly known as Eve, but let's not get into that here. That Their screens will be the first and only glossy WOLED monitor panels available. So some people will be interested in them for that reason alone. And we wanted to explore here what difference it had on picture quality and black depth so that everyone can know a bit more about it and make an informed decision. You can see that their custom glass glossy coating does have a small benefit of around 18% in black depth compared with matte AG coatings. Blacks do pop a little bit more in certain lighting conditions, but it's probably more noticeable in those brighter room conditions than in darker rooms. And that's where the matte AG coating then causes more light diffusion. There are some other added benefits of this coating as well that are probably outside the scope of this testing, but I think worth a mention still. The matte AG coating on all currently available monitor WOLED panels is pretty grainy and the glass coating removes that grain and the image therefore looks sharper and cleaner as a result. That image clarity is a more pronounced benefit compared with matte AG panels. If we add back in the traditional glossy WOLED panels from the TV market, we can see that it still has the edge when it comes to black depth. But on the other hand, the custom glass coating is quite a lot better at handling reflections. We think it's a pretty decent middle ground really, enhancing the picture quality by removing the grain from the matte panels, while at the same time improving perceived contrast and black depths a little, all the while avoiding many of the reflection challenges that a traditional glossy panel creates. This makes it more suited to daytime usage in well-lit rooms than a full glossy solution might be. If we take the same measurements of LCD screens, we get the following results. Note that unlike OLED monitors, the LCDs all start a little way up the y-axis as they're not producing true black in a dark room. How far up the y-axis these start depends on how bright you've configured the screen, as that has a direct impact on how deep the black can reach. In this example, we've configured each LCD screen to 200 nits brightness for now. The TN film and IPS screens all start at approximately the same point, not surprising as they have a contrast ratio of around 1000 to 1. The VA panel starts lower down as it can produce deeper blacks and has a higher contrast ratio, around 3200 in this example. If we remove VA for a moment, we can look at the four other panel and coating types that have all basically got the same starting black depth and contrast ratio in a dark room. This provides the simplest comparison between four different coatings on four different screens, with similar starting black depth. Despite all four panels starting at roughly the same y-axis point, the way each panel handles the ambient light varies as room brightness increases. This is dictated by how grainy and hazy the coating used on the panel is, and visually you can see this difference in the way the image appears overall, the way they handle reflections during use, and even the way the panel surface looks when you shine a light on it. TN Film has the haziest matte AG coating and causes more of the ambient light to be scattered and diffused across the panel, causing more of a reduction in black depth as the room gets brighter. It also makes the image look less clear and more grainy because of that additional coating. IPS matte AG coating is less grainy than TN film panels and looks a bit cleaner and clearer as a result during use. And it also helps protect that black depth a little bit more in the brighter room conditions. IPS matte reaches up to around 20% better black depth than TN film panels when viewed in a brighter lit room condition. The custom glass coated IPS panel, which is applied on top of a glossy panel finish, starts with the same black depth again as the matte AG coated IPS panel in a dark room, but as ambient light is increased, 
it maintains a better black depth, being around 9% better than a matte IPS overall. The glossy only IPS panel, which is the same but without the glass coating added, retains black depth slightly better as it had in the OLED space, being around 15% better than the IPS matte panel and around 6% better than IPS custom glass panels. If we then add the VA panel back in, uh, VA panels behave in a similar way to IPS matte, although their coating is slightly less hazy we found, diffusing the light in a slightly different way. VA panels have a better darkroom black depth than IPS panels when configured to the same brightness level, but the trend of the impact that the screen coating has on perceived contrast ratio is very similar. The VA panel has a slightly flatter line, which is a result of the slightly less hazy coating on the VA panel. Things become even more interesting when we then compare the perceived black depth of OLED panels against LCD panels. Here's a graph showing all the results we've discussed so far, including all the different OLED types and all the LCD types, and those are configured in this instance to 200 nits brightness for now. We'll dissect this a bit more in a minute, don't worry about making sense of this very busy graph for now. The interesting part here is where the lines for QD OLED panels cross over the lines for some of the LCD panels. Let's remove the others from the graph for a moment and allow us to compare this a little bit further. Here we've compared the second gen QD OLED panel against the VA panel as an example. The QD OLED panel starts off with a deeper black depth for a darker room, unsurprising as the pixels are now being turned off fully. The VA panel is strong for an LCD in this space, but some of the backlight is still shining through the panel, so it can't be fully black. However, as the ambient light level increases, there is a point at which the lines cross one another, and the VA panel starts to look more black than the QD OLED panel. This is where the QD layer and the lack of a polarizer on the QD OLED panel causes raised blacks, and they start to appear more gray. This applies for moderate to brighter room conditions, so if you're using your QD OLED panel in a darker room, the black depth should still look a bit better than VA panels in many situations. This of course is only one part of the overall viewing experience equation though, but if you're using a QD OLED panel in a moderately or brightly lit room, the blacks are impacted quite noticeably. The difference is even more pronounced and drastic when we compare a first gen QD OLED panel with the VA panel, and you can see that that crossover point is much sooner than the second gen panel. The difference then between the two visually is also more dramatic as the ambient lighting increases and the room becomes brighter since the first gen panel raises blacks more than the second gen QD OLED panel does. This video is an interesting demo comparing a first gen QD OLED panel against a VA panel running at 200 nits brightness. The room starts out dark with no external light, then the light is turned on and slowly increased before then being dimmed again. Note that the black depth on the VA is a little bit exaggerated in the dark room due to the camera exposure, but the interesting part in this comparison between the two is what happens when the lighting is increased. Keep in mind also that the comparison shown is for when the VA LCD screen has been configured to a 200 nits brightness level, which is pretty high actually. If you run the LCD at a lower brightness level, it will move the VA panel further down the graph and the crossover point actually moves further to the left into the lower ambient lighting conditions. If we now add back in the other LCD panel technologies when the screens are all configured to 120 nits brightness for example, you can see that the VA panel will look like it has a deeper black than a second gen QD OLED panel even in dimly lit rooms, which is what we've just discussed a minute ago. The IPS glossy and the IPS custom glass lines also dissect the second gen QD OLED panel line as well, although only in brighter rooms, so even those technologies can look like they have a deeper black depth than QD OLED in brighter room conditions. It's only really the IPS matte and TN film matte panels that have never really crossed that line. First gen QD OLED panels fare worse with black depth than second gen when comparing them to LCDs as well. Here we've provided the same comparison again where all the LCDs are configured to 120 nits brightness, but this time the QD OLED panel is a first gen panel. You can see that these first gen panels fare much worse at retaining black depth and all the LCD panel technology lines dissect the QD OLED line at some point, some in darker rooms like VA panels especially, some only in the much brighter rooms like TN Film for example. This doesn't impact WOLED panels though which retain their black depth much better than all the LCD panels as you can see from this graph. 
For completeness, this graph compares all the LCD panel types against the three different WALO panels and coating types we've tested. You can see that unlike the QDALO panels, the lines never cross, and so WALO panels will still remain better with a better perceived black depth than the LCD technologies, even in brighter room conditions. One important thing is that we're considering the different panel technologies here when used as a desktop monitor, not as a TV. So while QD OLED does seem to struggle in even moderately lit rooms for monitor usage, it's slightly perfectly fine for typical TV environments in that market. TVs tend to be used in darker rooms and more controlled lighting, and so while black depth will be impacted more relative to a glossy WOLED panel, it may not be as dramatic or noticeable as when considering a desktop monitor. QD OLED monitors do also have other benefits compared with current WOLED monitors such as a cleaner and clearer coating type, better text rendering, wider colour gamma, and an overall brighter HDR experience in general. So although this testing might paint QD OLED in a bad light, we don't want to forget that it is stronger in other areas. Perhaps that's a topic for another video, another day. We do hope that Samsung Display work to improve QD OLED black depth and handling better in future generations of the technology though. Keep in mind also that we're only comparing the visual perceived black depth of the panels. Contrast is a more complex consideration and something that will make this video far too long. So we'd encourage you to read the additional sections in the written article to understand how that impacts contrast ratio and other visual characteristics between the different panel technologies and coatings. We did also carry out some further testing where the light source was positioned behind the screen as a backlighting option only which is probably a more unusual setup, but can help protect black depth quite noticeably. Again, that's covered more in our written article on the website if you want to know more. There's a lot to take in from this video, but at the end of our written article, we do also provide a quick summary of all the findings, which is well worth reading back, I think, just to summarise what we've talked about here. If you've enjoyed this video and found it interesting, please do give us a quick thumbs up. Let us know in the comments if you've got any questions or what your views are on this Thank you for watching, we'll see you next time.